Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today's video is going to be about the uh, Ford OBS, which is my uh, my 94 Ford F350 um, 7.3 diesel 4x4 uh, that I did a short bed conversion on. And this video has been a long time coming. Um, I don't have a lot of, well, I don't have any video of the actual work that was done to convert to a short bed. Um, I do have some still pictures, not very good ones, they're cell phone pictures, but uh, I'm going to post up some of those pictures, uh, give you guys a list of considerations that you have to make when doing this kind of thing, and some of the challenges I ran into and some of the difficulties uh, in doing this conversion and modifying the frame and all the uh, other uh, items that you have to shorten in order to uh, put a short bed on your long bed F350. I wish I had more video. This was uh, a project I did earlier this year um, that I was under a real time crunch. I had to get the truck together. I did the conversion in a weekend so that I could, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a, a big enough work area to fit the truck. I can't fit it in my garage um, so that I could leave it in here and work on it over the course of time. So I had to do it all in, a, in one weekend. You know, it makes it difficult when you're trying to uh, do extensive modifications to something and you have to finish it in a day or two days maximum. You know, in order for me to close my garage door at night, I had to have the truck outside. In order to have it outside, it had to be drivable. So uh, it was, it was a, a lot of work in a short period of time and I didn't have time to set up cameras and take pictures. I just had time to bust knuckles and work. And um, you know, that, that's one of the reasons I decided to do a YouTube channel is so that I could put out um, video of, of some of these projects I've done. I, I, I've done a lot of work this year, a lot of different vehicles, and a lot of good stuff, a lot of good content that I could share. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I, I, didn't have, uh, I, I didn't have a YouTube channel at the time. It's one of the main reasons why I decided to do a YouTube channel, so I could put this content out there and... Um, maybe help some of you guys that are working on the same kind of projects and want to do the same uh, type of modification to your vehicle and, and show you some of the challenges I ran into and some of the solutions that I used. Uh, it may, may not be the best solution, may not be the best uh, uh, way to do something, uh, but it's the way that I found that worked for me. And, um, you know, take you can take this stuff and, and do it your own way and, and do your own research on it and uh, maybe I can contribute to helping you with your project. Um, so AJ, one of my subscribers here, had asked uh, asked for some detail on the shortening of the F-350. So uh, I'm going to put up the the images that I have. Unfortunately, it's all going to be my ugly mug here on camera, trying to explain uh, trying to explain what uh, what I did and why. And I'll use the still pictures that I have and, and describe what's going on in the still pictures at the time and try to do it in a chronological order that makes sense. Um, so I, I bought this F-350. Um, I had another 94 F-350 460 uh, powered truck at the time and uh, I had been doing some work on that. Uh, I bought that as a non-running uh, truck for 400 bucks um, that needed uh, the previous owner had taken the timing cover off to do the timing chain and never put anything back together. So he had left it open and exposed the elements for many months, I'm guessing, maybe a year even, uh, and never put it back together, but he had all the parts. So uh, I went and looked at it, and he, he had boxes of all the components, and uh, everything was brand new, ready to go on, but you know he, he didn't have the time or ability or whatever to put it back together. Um, the hardest part, really, putting that truck back together was that all of the nuts and bolts and everything that came off the truck were just thrown into a into a bin. Um, so nothing was labeled, nothing was bagged, nothing was separated. So I didn't know what bolts went where and that's really what I, I spent a lot of time doing was matching up how many holes I had and how many bolts I had that matched that those holes and uh, uh, trying to figure out where everything went back together. Uh, but I got that truck back together and, and was doing a lot of work on it. And uh, one of my buddies stopped by and said uh, he had seen uh, a 7.3 diesel on Craigslist um, for a good price. And uh, and he said you ought to sell the, the black one, uh, the 460, 
and um, put that money into buying the 7.3 because he knew I wanted a 7.3 diesel. Uh, my plans for the 460 powered truck was uh, to do a diesel conversion, do a four wheel drive conversion, and do a short bed conversion. All of those things were on the radar for uh, the 460, but getting a diesel conversion legalized, legal in California is, uh, is difficult at best. Um, and since I didn't have a 7.3 motor from the same generation truck to put into it, it was, it was going to be quite the challenge. So uh, when my buddy suggested I take a look at this 7.3 diesel, um, I jumped on it right away. Unfortunately, you know, the truck uh, didn't have a transmission, didn't have a transfer case, didn't have a rear drive line. All it had in it when I bought it was the 7.3 IDI, which was not running, and uh, had no bed on it at all. It was just a just a cab and the front clip. Um, so that was a little daunting. You know, I, I knew I, what I was in for putting that together. Um, and I didn't know what I, what I was going to do with it because I couldn't move it around. Um, so uh, my buddy with the, with the blue uh, 460 powered Ford um, helped me out in many, many ways uh, with this project and, and uh, was able to push the thing up into the garage for me where I could at least start working on it. So I, I got the truck up into the garage put it up on jack stands and lopped off the back half of it right away because I knew I was going to do a short bed conversion I had already bought the short bed uh, for my my 460 powered F350 so I had the bed sitting on the side of the house and um, I, I knew I was going to do the conversion on the truck I needed to get the truck running, I needed to put a transmission in, I needed to do some wiring, I needed to uh, clean it out because it was in horrible condition inside um, and the only way I could do all of that stuff is if I had it in the garage because it wasn't running. I couldn't park it in the driveway, pull it in, put it, you know, put it back out. So I pulled it in, uh, went went at it with the sawzall, and cut the cut the frame right in half. Um, put the truck on stands, put the back half of the frame section on the side of the house, and uh, spent the next couple weeks working on getting it running. So. Uh, I gave it some fuel, cleaned up some wiring problems, some messes under the hood, uh, and uh, things started right up. And um, with a few adjustments here and there, it actually ran pretty good uh, sitting on stands. So then I found a, uh, had to find an E4OD uh, transmission to go behind it. And uh, the only thing I could come up with was a two wheel drive transmission. So. I put uh, put the two-wheel drive tranny in there, and that uh, that got me to the point where I could then connect the two frame sections together, do the shortening, and make it be able to move, uh, which was a big step in the project. So the basics of the the short bed swap is that you have to take 16 inches out of the frame, and fortunately. Um, the section of frame that you have to cut is right behind the front bed mounts and the middle bed mounts. So it's that, and there's a nice straight section of frame rail that, when when you pull the bed off, it's obvious where you need to cut it at. Um, there's some considerations you have to make about about cutting the frame in not just where you want to cut it, but how you want to cut it and how you want to put it back together. So when I initially put the truck in the garage, I just cut it straight down. I knew that. Uh, I knew that I would be zing the frame. That was my method for connecting the two sections of frame together. Um, and I knew approximately where that was going to happen. So I just took the sawzall, moved back six or eight inches, and cut, cut straight down through the frame because I knew that section of frame was going to be tossed out anyway when I cut it up. So uh, when it came time to actually z the frame together, um, I took my 16 inches, and I actually, on my truck, I went 16 and a quarter because I didn't want uh, a wide gap between the bed and the cab. I wanted to keep that nice and tight. So I went 16 and a quarter inches, uh, figured out my starting point behind the cab, where I wanted the front of my Z to be, and, uh, and measured each section of frame rail, marked it, cut it with the angle grinder and, and the cutoff disc, which is my preferred method for cutting everything, it seems like, uh, and put my Zs together 
for a test fit and they butt it up perfectly um, at which point once once the two frame sections were connected together um, and held together with ratchet straps then I started measuring my dimensions and you want to make sure you're very thorough in measuring everything so you, you butt your frame sections together and then you diagonally measure and you cross measure and you measure your wheelbase both sides and uh, you know find two fixed points on the frame rail both front and rear of the cut that you can reference to make sure that you have it square and straight so that your frame is 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 square both frame rails are square together and the truck isn't dog-legging and, and you know uh, um, out of alignment so it involves a lot of trimming and fitting and, and getting getting the frame to butt up to to itself uh, you know exact and or as close as you can get it so that you don't have alignment problems you don't have uh, a truck that's uh, the back ends trying to pass the front and then once you have the once you have the frame rails connected to each other and welded um, you know you have to plate it you have to you have to reinforce um, that weld point uh, both inside and out um, on my truck I've only reinforced the outside of the frame rails uh, I'm going to readdress the inside of the frame rails uh, when I do the fuel system for the 5.9 conversion uh, I'm going to gut everything out of there um, and change that whole uh, all of the fuel lines to some stainless hard lines uh, so when I when I do that I've got to strip the inside of the frame rails I, I'm going to clean all the clean all the welds up on the inside of the frame and box the ins or plate the inside of the frame rail where the cuts at so that it has you know as much or more strength than it did when it was stock once I had the two frame sections uh, welded together and plated on the outside of the frame to reinforce it um, that's when the hard work work really began so when you shorten the frame and you take your 16 inches out of the, the section between the front bed bolts and the, and the second row of bed bolts um, there's a lot of items that are in that space that also need to be shortened uh, such as the the drive shaft you'll need to take uh, length out of the drive shaft so that'll have to go to a driveline shop or you can do like I did and cut the end yoke off and uh, shorten shorten the tube weld the yoke back on I don't have any driveline vibrations from that I've got plenty of other vibrations that uh, uh, cancel out anything that the drive shaft is making um, and make sure you get a good weld bead around there. You don't want your drive shaft snapping in half uh, when you're when you're running down the road at 70 miles an hour. Uh, the wiring harness, I, I didn't really have to modify the wiring harness. There's about 12 wires on that side uh, of the frame, on the on the driver's side of the frame that run inside the frame rail. Uh, you could cut and shorten those wires. Uh, I didn't shorten mine. All I did was take and loop the loop the harness, the slack that was in the harness, and zip tie it up into the frame. I think uh, I think that works fine. Um, if you wanted to do a more proper installation, you could cut those wires and shorten them. I didn't feel it was really necessary. Uh, the e-brake cables. Um, when you cut the frame section, the e-brake cables that run from the rear drums up to the frame mount into a bracket, um, which is mounted right where you have to section the frame. So that bracket has to come off. I ground the rivet heads off, pried the bracket loose, and then popped the rivets out um, and left that hanging. And then when I welded the two frame sections back together, I reattached the bracket in the same location, uh, same distance from the end of the frame rail, uh, and just did two plug welds to hold it to the frame. The, the two rear cables that go to the drums don't need to be modified, but the intermediate cable that connects uh, from the e-brake bracket to the pedal assembly up at the front of the cab uh, that intermediate length cable needs to be shortened. Now you could take and put a loop in it and run a couple cable clamps and clamp that cable tightly probably three or four cable clamps in a line uh, would, would work fine um, or you can order the F250 crew cab short bed uh, intermediate emergency brake cable and that should be the correct length uh, for the shortened frame. Uh, the fuel lines that run to the rear fuel tank will have to be shortened um, and they're a hard line. Uh, there's a flexible end that connects to the, to the pickup in the tank uh, and then it's hard line all the way to the fuel selector valve. So 
that section of hard line will need to be shortened. And what I did on mine is uh, cut those lines back, used a used a tubing cutter um, to cut the lines, and then slipped over a piece of fuel injection hose, fuel injection rated hose, and uh, used two or three hose clamps on either end of those connections to shorten that uh, span. When I do the motor swap here on the F-350, I'm going to remove all of the fuel system components and redo the whole fuel system front to rear. So since I'm planning on gutting the entire fuel system anyway, I thought it would be fine temporarily just to splice it together. And uh, you see in the quick video here the, uh, the lift pump that I've added, and that's going to get replaced with a higher volume uh, lift pump to feed the bigger motor and turbo that's going on the 5.9 conversion. Uh, the rear brake line has to be shortened, uh, and all I did there was uh, used a brake line cutter to cut the cut the line to size, and then uh, just a brake line union that I got from a local auto parts store. It's brass brake line union to connect those two sections of brake line together. It's pretty simple. Uh, and the exhaust, the exhaust will have to be shortened. Um, in my case, I had a really uh, a really gnarly exhaust system that the previous owner had put together here. He used a combination of three, four, and five inch pipe um, tubing to make his exhaust, and it was it was pretty bad. So I was uh, I was anxious to get that out from under my truck. Uh, he also had the the muffler was located over the top of the axle, and I moved all of that forward so that the muffler is located at the front section of the bed, and uh, then my tailpipe, which I haven't put on yet. Uh, because I'm planning to gut this whole thing anyway. Uh, but the tailpipe then would connect uh, from there. I think it's just much cleaner looking and uh, um, better place to locate the muffler. So some of the regular questions I get asked about it when people find out that I have actually shortened the truck, most people don't notice because, you know, I think uh, because the F-250 was available in a crew cab short pad, they just assume that it's an F-250. Um, but some of the questions I get asked is uh, uh, questions like what did it cost to build uh, you know it, it uh, didn't cost very much to modify um, you know the most expensive part really was buying the fuel tank the fuel tank was about 65 bucks uh, the rest of it didn't didn't cost anything but time and materials to uh, cut cut the frame um, if you're going to have your drive shaft shortened at a at a drive line shop, that's a cost factor you have to take into consideration. My local shop here will shorten a steel drive shaft usually for 75 bucks, so that's in the ballpark of where you're going to spend to get the drive line shortened. Um, people ask why I used a Z when I when I cut the frame rail. Why why did I use two Zs and overlap them? And the reason I, I Z-section the frame as opposed to just cutting the frame straight off and butting it together uh, is to get more weld surface. Um, that's one of the reasons. Uh, you know, with the Z, you have more uh, linear inches in a Z than in a straight line. So, uh, because the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, right? So, by using a Z, uh, it gave me more weld surface per inch uh, for a stronger joint and... Uh, also, using a Z, I don't have very many, I, I don't have one continuous vertical cut uh, that would be an ideal spot for a crack to form and, and separate. Uh, you know, if a crack's going to form there in my Z, it's got to it's gotta travel a long ways in order to separate the frame. Uh, and then I also box the outside with a fish plate, so it's, uh, it's not, uh, hopefully it's not going to crack there. I know a lot of guys love a long bed, you know, you got a lot of room back there, you could put dirt bikes in there with the tailgate up and all your gear and everything, and um, you have quite a bit more space than I have with the short bed, but uh, around here a short bed's a, a little more convenient, and um, I don't haul a lot of stuff in the bed of my truck, so I don't really miss having a long bed. Uh, strength concerns, you know, it's uh, anytime you modify the frame you have to be worried about strength, and um, my plans are to uh, box in the intersection of frame rail and plate that so that it's uh, stronger, uh, I think, than it was originally. 
Um, I've currently plated the outside of the frame with the fish plate just to strengthen that Z. Um, but to do the job properly, you need to reinforce the inside of the frame as well, I think. Um, use lots of plug welds on your, on your plate and um, a perimeter weld as well that ties in the top and bottom of the frame so that the frame can't twist and start cracking in that location. Uh, you also want to make sure your cross members are solid. Um, in my case, I don't have a solid cross member under the cab. Uh, that's another thing that has to be addressed. So I need the I need the rear cross member that has the two body mounts on it. Um, mine was cracked, and uh, I need to replace it with a good solid cross member or um, rebuild it uh, and make it uh, make it strong and proper. People ask why I like the short bed conversion, and um, you know, I, I think I kind of covered that earlier in the video. Uh, it's just easier to drive around, easier to turn. I can make U-turns now. I can park in parking lots. It's easier to back up. Um, just everything about the truck I like better with the short bed. Um, it rides nicer, uh, which for my truck kind of rides like an empty wheelbarrow most of the time. But uh, it was worse with the long bed. You get that galloping effect because of the long wheelbase. And um, I don't have that problem anymore after after doing the short bed conversion. Would I do it again is a question I, I get asked, you know, is, is that something you would do again if, if you had the option? And uh, yeah, you know, the, the more I do the same job over and over again, the better I get at it. And uh, I think you make little improvements to your process every time you do something and uh, uh, come out with a better finished product uh, with practice. So yeah, I'd like to readdress some areas of the frame. I'm, I'm probably going to pull the bed off here soon and uh, plate in the inside of the frame rails uh, and address that rear cross member at the same time. Hopefully I can do that without having to pull the cab. I think I can just jack the cab up enough to get, me, get myself enough room to get in there, uh, remove the old cross member and weld in the new cross member. And uh, then, then things should be in good shape on the truck. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I don't tow with the truck because I haven't finished beefing up the frame so it, it would probably be fine I think my welds are sufficient but uh, it would be nice to to know for sure that there's no way that frame is going to start cracking or sagging so future plans for the truck I've got lots of stuff in the works uh, for this F-350. Um, you know, the number one thing I'm trying to get to is my 5.9 conversion. Uh, I, I'm still deciding between 12 and 24 valve if I want to deal with the electronics of a CRD uh, 24 valve Cummins or uh, if I want to go with old simple 12 valve manual injection uh, or mechanical injection uh, diesel. And I'm kind of torn. I'm kind of on the fence. Uh, the electronics doesn't uh, bother me too much and I like the like the option of having uh, adjustable tunes and using EFI Live and having um, you know multiple tuning options, transmission tuning uh, as far as your shift points go, or line pressures, and all of that stuff is easily done uh, with EFI Live. So I'm I'm tempted to go 24 valve plus around here uh, the 24 valves are a little bit cheaper than the 12 valve. People, everybody wants a 12 valve because it's simple and. Uh, people tend to be sh a little gun shy of the 24 valve so I might be able to pick one of those up for a better price uh, super duty suspension is something I'm going to do here um, I'm going to replace the leaf springs in the front with a super duty radius arms and a super duty uh, Dana 50 front axle uh, as well as super duty steering uh, basically converting the whole front end to a radius arm super duty front suspension uh, the rear suspension, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use Super Duty leaf springs, Super Duty uh, Sterling 10 quarter rear axle, um, and basically remove the uh, the rear Sterling 10 quarter that I have. And you know, I, I love the Dana 60. I, I know how bulletproof they are. Uh, this this truck isn't ever going to see any serious off roading, and um, I don't really need the Dana 60 up there. It's it's mainly going to be a street truck. Uh, it will do towing duty and occasional off-road, but it's not going to be a hardcore wheeler. 
and I, I just don't need the strength of the Dana 60. And I think I can fund the whole project, the whole axle swap and suspension project, just by selling the front axle. Um, the rear axle will just uh, uh, get me on the way to new wheels and tires to fit the metric pattern on the Super Duty axles. Uh, the whole interior is gutted right now uh, because I'm going to replace everything in there with Dodge, uh, uh, Dodge interior from a third gen. So, you know, seats uh, front and rear uh, are going to get replaced. The center consoles are going to get installed from the Dodge. Um, I'm going to recolor the headliner. I've got some some tan headliner material that's going to go in there, and I'm going to replace all the plastic trim in the truck with. Uh, with brown colored or tan colored uh, plastic trim so that everything matches nicely with the tan leather seats I want to put in it. Um, so it'll be a nice comfortable uh, comfortable ride, comfortable truck to drive cross country and I'll have the um, you know the nice power seats in there from the Dodge. Um, I, don't, I don't really like the later model Super Duty seats so that's why I'm going with the Dodge stuff. And the last thing I've got to tackle is a ton of bodywork. Um, this truck is not very straight. Uh, the roof needs a lot of attention. Uh, the rear cab corner needs to be finished. Um, every panel pretty much on the truck has some kind of damage or another that needs to be addressed. Um, and I've got to get a rear tailgate on it and a rear bumper on it. So, you know, over time I'm going to piece all that stuff together. Once I get a break here from the 48 project, I can... I can refocus my attention and time on the uh, F-350 here on the OBS and get uh, get some of that stuff handled. Um, I'd also like to do maybe a, a power sliding rear window. I think that would be cool. Um, so I have some plans for the truck. Lots of lots of plans. Lots of upcoming projects. Um, I just have to finish the 48 that I'm working on here in order to uh, to free up my time so I can get uh, start working on the the OBS project. So that's all coming soon. Um, I just wanted to make this video to uh, kind of answer some questions for you guys out there that are planning to do your own short bed conversion. Um, I did a lot of homework, you know, and had to find a lot of answers on my own for a lot of these questions when I did mine. And uh, so I thought I'd put this information out for uh, those of you guys that have an OBS long bed and you want the short bed conversion. So there you go guys, I wish I had more video. Uh, like I said, this um, this sh short bed conversion was uh, done before I started making YouTube videos and I really wish I had that on video but uh, all I've got is a few still pictures. I had to do the whole thing in a weekend so um, I took a few shots but most of the time I was just asses and elbows. So. Uh, so there you go guys, that's a, a rundown of, of the process that I used to shorten the, uh, shorten the OBS F350-7.3 and uh, the reasons that I did it and the reasons uh, I, I did things the way I did it and suggestions on how you do yours, um, you know, an overview of the whole process, uh, the costs involved um, and the future plans here for, uh, for my 7.3 OBS. So uh, thanks, thanks for the question AJ and uh, I hope this helps you a little bit in your planning for your project and anyone else who's planning this kind of project. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me a question. I'll be happy to answer them for you as best I can. Um, and please uh, look forward to more videos of my 7.3 OBS, the 460 OBS, and uh, you know all of our other future projects that we have lined up here. There's going to be a lot of great stuff coming. So thanks for watching, guys.